Hey, my name is Kate Spencer, and I am a writer and a podcaster, and I'm the author of uh, the memoir, The Dead Moms Club, a book about death, grief, and surviving the mother of all losses. And in case you can't tell from the title, the book is about dealing with uh, the grief I experienced after my mom died when I was 20 seven years old. Um, my mom, Martha, died of pancreatic cancer. She was diagnosed in June of 2006 and was dead in March 2007. So she lived for about nine months after her diagnosis and um, we were extremely close um, and I came from a, a family that had lived a very fortunate and privileged life in which we had not experienced um, illness or death of someone at a younger age. Um, I, you know, I thought I had grandparents who were like in their 80s and 90s, you know, my, my mom died six weeks after her own mother and then, and she was survived by her father and both my dad's parents. So I, I had kind of been very oblivious to the fact that this was something that could happen to my life. And uh, of course, as if you're watching this, as you know, it is something that can happen and death and loss happens in all sorts of ways. Um, and so I, I processed the experience of her illness and also um, the aftermath, the continued aftermath, even whatever I'm at now, 13, 14 years later, it's still, you know, it's still there. So um, the way I really, began to chip away at it, um, touch it, avoid it even, um, examine my grief and, and all the feelings that came along with it was through writing. So I am a, um, a writer professionally, which is I think how I ended up getting it all into an actual published book. But the thing I think that is so significant about writing when it comes to experiencing grief is is that it's just for you i think sometimes with writing we think it has to be polished or has to be professional or it has to be presentable or something that someone can see and as cliched as it is to suggest that one journal <laughs> journaling has saved me um, through so many of my experiences with grief um, in that it just creates a space where I can say the scariest, ugliest, hardest, saddest, most awful things that I need to say and get it out in a space where it's not going to be touched by anyone else. And what I have found really powerful in, in writing uh, and grief is that it is you are able to ref go back and reflect on it so i actually kept a journal throughout my mom's illness that i went back and looked at while i was writing my memoir um, i wrote my memoir and uh, it came out in 2017 so it was significantly after my mom had passed and you know so so much of um the experience of her illness and death i had kind of blocked out um they were it was so traumatic and so painful and also, it was all happening in a whirlwind and on like, you know, no sleep. So I didn't retain a lot of the feelings, the memories, the moments, even just like the frenetic energy and fear and all these things I, I was experiencing. And so it has been very powerful to go back and reflect on that experience and connect to it um, and also see the changes and how I, I experienced grief and experienced the loss of my mom. Um, I think the other thing that is really powerful about writing when it comes to grief and loss is that it can connect you to the person or persons you're grieving or animals you're grieving, whoever and whatever it is. Um, I, you it's almost a way of continuing the relationship or it has been for me in that I got to keep as I have 
aged without my mom here. You know, she died when I was 27, I'm 41 now. Um, it has allowed me to think about things and almost communicate with her or talk to her about things going on in my life that she never got to see. You know, she wasn't here when I got married, has not seen my career, has never met my children, didn't know I was gonna do any of this stuff, um, doesn't know I live in California, <laughs> you know, all, all these things. So um, it's been a way to kind of keep getting to know her and also for her to keep getting to know me. Um, and that's been really meaningful. I mean, also, look, I have sat in various locations, whether it's on an airplane, in a coffee shop, in my home office, in my car, writing, hysterically crying. It is a way of processing and getting stuff out or in. And it has, it has been cathartic, it is exhausting, but I think if you are writing about your experience, um, it can it can it can assist in processing and whatever that means because obviously what we all know about grief is that it's such an individual experience these relationships are specific to us so it's not going to look the same for anyone With that being said i've been asked to read a little bit of um, my book and I will say, even though it's about, it's about the aftermath of losing my mom. My mom was very private. I did not want to write a book about her cancer. She, I don't think she would have wanted that, but I, I, I was interested in writing about what it was like for me as a 20 something to just kind of experience this loss at a time in my life where I was like an adult who also still felt like her child. And a lot of this book is just about me processing the emotions that came along with my grief for me, that was anger. Um, and that was something that was very hard for me to even examine for a while. And so that has been very helpful in writing this book is really beginning to understand just how angry I was, how angry I am about my experience. So I will read a couple um, paragraphs. This is a chapter I wrote about how after my mom died, um, I, I basically, <laughs> after my mom passed away, I, one way that I coped um, was by restrictive eating and kind of developing a very disordered eating. It was the only thing I could really control in my life. Um, and I, and that was just uh, the way I distracted myself from the reality of losing my mom was that I just became very laser focused on weight loss. Um, and I should also preface this by saying that I come from a comedy background, so this is not, my book is not your like typical grief book, I don't think. Um, there tend to be some jokes. I don't know if there are gonna be jokes in what I read, but um, that is who I am. My anger was conceived, nurtured, and birthed during the one second I found out my mother was sick. Sure, I had all the other standard emotions that come with a dying mom, denial, depression, sadness, the ability to eat box after box of wheat thins despite having had dinner just 30 minutes before. But the anger was there from the start and it bubbled over constantly. I hated everyone who crossed my path from the overly concerned social worker at the hospital to the nutritionist who gave my mom a milkshake recipe, complimented our matching mother-daughter pants and then sent us on our way. After she died, my rage strangled everything around me like a throbbing hate tentacle. It's a cliche to claim that there are no words to describe the emotional acid trip that is grief, but anyone who's been through it knows that words just don't do it justice. Grief poisons every corner of your life, fogging up your brain with sadness so deep that just breathing can hurt. Even after my mom died and I went back to living full-time with Anthony, my husband now, found a fun new job, went out with friends for sushi, jogged along the Hudson River. It felt as if I were doing all these things while stoned. I was high on my sorrow and never quite fully present. It was a thick, hazy goo that covered every part of my life like a cobweb that sticks to you no matter what you do to shake it loose. Grief is a sort of weird superpower. It paralyzes you, but you're able to keep moving forward while simultaneously being eaten alive by your pain. It is also a cockroach. It can live through any apocalypse you throw its way. I was so wounded by my mother's death and the fury I felt that I could barely speak about it. 
Sure, I was able to give a clinical rundown of what had happened. It's a story you get used to telling, and one that you can recite without actually thinking about the words you're saying. Yeah, my mom died of pancreatic cancer. She was stage four when she was diagnosed, so she only lived for nine months. It spread to her liver. It was hard, but my family did hospice, and it was really meaningful that we all got to be together. But inside, I would churn with rage and fury and dark coils of sadness. These emotions felt endless inside me. I'd show up at therapy and spit them up on the floor, but they just kept coming, like a magician doing that creepy trick where he pulls an endless rope of scarves out of his mouth. So, Thank you for listening um, and thank you for including me.